Hey guys, so it's Monday. It's 9, 10, and we are leaving Summers to take a vex to Foggy Bottom so we can go to our class, which starts at 9.35. So the vex is gonna leave at 9.15 and we'll be down at Foggy in about 10 minutes or a, li a little bit more. So one vex just left. If you can see it leaving down there, but another one just arrived, so we're gonna be taking that one. And it's raining today, but it's still beautiful, right? <laughs> I just like this weather. Got out of the Vex. It's 9:26, and the class starts in nine minutes. It's in the Elliot Building. The class is Entrance to Communication Studies. So Elliot is right across from us. And once I go in, I'm gonna show you guys Elliot from the inside. So let's go. is that's what makes scholarly research replicable. You hear the word replicate in there? So the idea is that if somebody wanted to sort of test, is that once they get their findings and make them public, they lose control. Those findings can be used in all kinds of different ways. Things right at two ends of a continuum and then that whole range of items that fit in between. So we've talked about this dialectic idea. When it comes to research and communication, we're going to look at three points. First, today we'll start with rhetorical criticism. So this is kind of a humanities approach to studying communication. We communicate through text. There's a focus on how do people actually communicate with one another in an interactive way. And so we might 
study people by observing their interactions, or we might interview them about their experiences and study the way they talk about those experiences. You know, style and looking at particular kinds of language. But we're gonna look at it pretty broadly as three sort of phases in the process. First is description. You take your text and you identify what is the context. Finished class. Hey guys, so we just got out of the class at 10 50. What we're gonna do now is head to the gym, work out, and then go back to the Vern. Hey guys, today's Tuesday, which means that today we're going to be having three classes. Two on Mount Vernon and one down at Foggy Bottom. First, we're going to have comparative politics at Post Hall, Academic Hall. Second, we're going to have university writing in Ames Hall. And the third one will be astronomy down at Foggy Bottom in Corcoran Hall. So stay with me on the journey and you'll see the classes from the inside. Let's go. Very hot threshold of, of far right extremism, fascism. For a country that's still a universal democracy, it's odd. You don't see it uh, in most other places. Okay, we talked about our economic wealth. The national debt is you know, over $30 trillion. It actually crossed 30 trillion just recently. This was not the only country where it's projected they're on a, a certain level of either completion, which is what Mordecai Benunu alleges, that South Africa still has the capability, despite what they've said in the public, because they already lied about the detonation, and other countries who are in various stages all over the world. So Israel's not the only one, too. This is just sort of a status report on what we do know, or think we know so far, about particular countries that we know that these countries have. We, we leave this building, we go outside. So we think we can do whatever we want to the air and it has no effect. And that's just not true. It's not true. You have to almost think of it as a, as a glass roof. You can see the clouds, <laughs> you can see the sky, but there is a roof there, even if you can go through it. No different than water, being able to leave the water and go into the oxygen. Criticism. Right around, again, 1900, fossil fuels take off, and they just become the overwhelmingly dominant energy form, whether it's gas or oil or coal. And we can see the temperature right around that same time go up. broadly about it, it's because as you all know that you know, you're working in very different genres right now. Um, and so when we, when we meet on Thursday, 
um, and we'll sort of talk in small groups, we'll come back to these kinds of questions that we asked as you all were brainstorming, which is, right, and who is blowing up? But one of the things that I've really been talking to a number of you about with you know, questions about the particulars of this are really in terms of purpose to be thinking about messaging, right, for message. And so part of what we're doing is really thinking about fit and scope, right? So what have you... And we might sort of add just a little nudge, which is sort of to say, how can you tell, right? Like, are there things that built in that seem to be, right, that, that we don't have to just guess at that? With me, cause baby, I just been following your voice just to see that you have been making me more so we just got out of UW, and next up will be astronomy course, Origins of Cosmos class.
close to the source of any of our solar system here that water is going to be more than 100 degrees okay and you cannot have a stable life in this kind of situation it's very hot okay all right <clears throat> so so this thing is the one that, is, that any planet any moon here in potentially uh, you create some kind of condition that respect at least this the definition of habitability is very basic and it's just related to to have water in, in the liquid form okay and essentially it's the number of civilization that we can get at least into communication okay but in order to get that is somehow related to, to what we mentioned before that is life in order to have a communication first you need to have all the conditions of life you have you need to have a star a stable you need to have planets in the habitable zone and then you need to i mean that civilization needs to be there for a certain amount of time in order to get such level of degree of technological advance in order to create sources of, of communication like you know cell phones or, or radio hey guys today is wednesday april 20th happy first day of the tourist season today our class schedule looks like this we have first first we have intro to communication studies at 9 35 and we finish at 10 50 and at 11 10 we have international security politics in monroe hall so today's schedule is two classes so stay on the way and i'll show you interest communication studies once again and then international security politics let's go So one thing that people can do is if they take a covert role, they can then later at the end of their study, they can disclose that they can talk to the community and get their input 
on what they observed. It's also a way of kind of checking their findings and checking their observations and perceptions. Uh, they can, as taking an overall, challenge at all. So if that's the challenge, it's the absence of a challenge. So because if you have that, you're in condition three where both sides uh, are vulnerable. systems uh, uh, up and running that we did by the late 1960s or early 1970s where truly we were in a condition of mutual suicide. Sorbonne at their high, 
and the probability of something going wrong is increasing. But this idea of autonomous race within the context, especially of brinksmanship, is something that, that we want to talk about uh, and, and link that to Powell's discussion. That was part of Powell's discussion, but link this also to Powell's discussion about risk and credibility of, of risk. Any questions about this? <laughs>so today's thursday today's schedule is basically the same as the tuesday's one comparative politics university writing and astronomy today's also a special day because the registration opens uh for me personally and i have to register for the 2022 fall semester the registration opens depends on the credits on how many credits you have and mine is today thursday so I have to do that and also we have astronomy test today so let's see how it goes today's friday so today's schedule is is gonna look like this so basically we have international security politics like wednesday at 11 10 and at one o'clock we're going to have shaolin kung fu 
yeah, an exercise class. But yesterday when I said that I was going to register for classes, I was wrong. It wasn't my scheduled day to uh, register for classes. But it was actually today, so before I left, me and my roommate, we registered, got all that done. And when I come back, I'm gonna show you guys what my schedule is gonna look like for next semester, fall of 2022. Oh my god, the next is about to leave. It's okay, we'll catch another one. Thank you. about Soviet Union comparative advantage in war making with its enormous amount of, of uh, uh, people and materials with its emphasis on uh, land uh, 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 assault is something that, that, that may reflect a comparative advantage or so uh, Lawrence Friedman suggests with regards to uh, uh, Soviet preferences for uh, uh, war making. So is Jordan here? Thank, Thank you. you, Professor. Have okay. a nice day. Hey guys, so we just got back into my dorm. Um, as I said before I left for international security politics, I would be showing you guys my uh, class schedule for the next semester. Me and my roommate got to register, got all that done um, at 9 a.m. because that's when the registration opened and there was a huge influx of like, um, web was like going down, you had to re-sign in. So because it's like a lot of freshmen or those people who have like a certain amount of credits are like registering at that hour. So got all that done. So right now I'm gonna be showing you guys what my schedule is gonna look like for next semester. So basically guys, for next semester, I'm gonna be taking 18 credits, which is the maximum that a student can take. Well, at GW, that's what I suppose, but at other universities, I'm not sure. Uh, you can uh, ask for your advisor for more than 18 credits, which I don't recommend because it's going to be too much. I mean, 18 credits is already too much, which is why students take like less than 18 credits. But I'm trying to like fulfill every kind of requirement I need to get political science and international business degree because I'm double majoring. So I'm just gonna, trying to get all of all of this stuff like out of the way. Plus, I have to do general requirements for a CCAS, which is Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. The school that I got into at GW, which is like math requirements, scientific, oral communication, and university writing, which is a general, a general requirement for every student. 
So um, for next semester, I'm scheduled to take Principles of Economics, which is a, a Principles of Economics 1, which is a requirement to take one of the courses that is a requisite, um, not a requisite, but a, a required for international business degree. Um, it, uh, so Principles of Economics is going to be a prerequisite, I suppose, yeah. And with Principles of Economics, I'm going to be taking the Age of Globalization, which is a required class to get international business degree. And along with them, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be taking mathematics and politics because for CCAS or the university requirements or CCAS, either way, um, you have to take one mathematics course. So the closest one that I can get to my degree, which is political science, would be math and politics. Some students and my friends Sam have said that it is easy um, and they recommended me to take this class to fulfill my math requirements. So I'm going to be taking that. For political science class, I had planned to take um, the American presidency and theory of war, but uh, since the registration opened like a few days ago, seniors, juniors, or sophomores, they had the upper hand, or I think it's based on requirements, like based on how many credits you have. So people have like 50 or more or 30 or more, something like that. Basically, they got to be the first one to the first ones to take it. Uh, so basically, what I can do now is wait list for that course. But instead of them, I have f like filled in their mm, substitute. <laughs> yeah. But and instead of them, their place instead of their place their place instead of those classes. I am registered to take Russian politics uh, and Tocqueville's vision Amer Democracy. I am, when I researched, basically it was, oh, let me research again. It was a French um, diplomat, politician, um, a poet, during the American Revolutionary War. So I guess GW is um, offering this course dedicated in to his name. It's Alexis de Tocqueville and his um, theory about American democracy, democracy in general, political and social ideas of his era and so on. So he basically was during the American Revolutionary War during 1776 and those and that period. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna be taking that course unless I switch and waitlist for theory of war or the American presidency. Either I switch Russian politics or this class. Um, basically, I I chose Russian politics and took Tocqueville's vision of American democracy because they were open. There was no waitlist for them, so I just got to grab that because let's say if I don't get in for the wait list that I want for the American presidency and theory of war, I can have these as plan B. So yeah, other than that, I'm going to have a discussion call, um, discussion session for the economics class. And as a requirement for CCAS or university in general, I have to take an oral communications course. This semester I'm taking intro to communication studies. So that one, so that one class has fulfilled it, but I need another one. And I am gonna be taking intro to German literature in English language. Or I can switch and take public communication. Either one of those. So basically next semester, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six classes. And with an addition of a discussion course. So a busy semester. So yeah. That's my schedule for next semester. I guess that's it for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. I hope you guys stay tuned. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything, just drop them down below. Hope you guys like this video. Subscribe. Once again, comment down below. Ask me any questions you have about GW or anything else, and I'll respond. Thank you once again, and see you guys in another video. Peace out.